What's up everyone, how are you doing and welcome back to another video. I've been getting so many questions from you guys about how to start my web development journey. What should I do? Where should I begin? Uh, what things should I learn? So in this video I have composed a very simple web developer roadmap of the things you should know, where you should get started and how you should continue to develop your web development journey to become a very good web developer. So I'm going to start at the fundamental level and then I'm going to go and take you into the more advanced concepts so you can kind of build up your knowledge and finally get to the stage that you want to be at towards the end. Now, the first thing that you want to learn when you are a web developer is how the internet works. How does the client interact with the server? How do HTTP and HTTPS protocols work? What is DNS? How to host your website? Uh, how to get a domain name to make your website available to the public, like myself, so I can view it, so I can see it. Now many of you just starting out in the web development industry might be asking yourself, where can I get a domain? But more importantly, how can I make my website stand out? How can I make it bougie and cool and relevant to the things that I do as a developer? Luckily, I have partnered with .tech domains along with Namecheap to give you guys the opportunity to have your start in tech. As a person who teaches and transfers my knowledge on the internet, I'm a firm believer that coding education should be available and accessible to anyone on the planet, especially the people that really want to learn and really want to get into coding. And most importantly, the people who are less privileged than us. Now, the reason I have partnered with these guys is because they're donating 100% of the proceeds from the sales of .tech domains to code.org which is an organization that will ensure access to computer science education for students from marginalized communities and young women. Now, I think this is absolutely fantastic and a great cause to participate in. So if you would like to grab yourself a really cool .tech domain and support the journey of your fellow future computer scientists, make sure you head over to go.tech. philip Get yourself a sweet domain and feel great about it. Come on, this is such an amazing opportunity and we should definitely support people like that. Now, moving on as a web developer, you need to have access to basic tools. Now, there's many tools that are offered out there, but I think the most basic and fundamental ones are things such as a terminal on a Mac or a command line on Windows. The terminal or the command line will allow you to run specific commands and these commands will perform specific tasks such as committing and pushing code to GitHub, running your web application locally, or even printing the logs of an error that might have occurred in your code, which lets you backtrack and figure out what the issue is. Or sometimes even the terminal or the command line will actually tell you what the issue is. Now, without this tool, you can't really progress as a developer. It's such a fundamental and you should definitely look into it, install it and learn how to use it. Other tools that are extremely relevant are design tools. Now, I think when you're designing a web application, your own website, private portfolio, a CV website, whatever you want to do, it's best to plan how you want it to look. Now, when I was learning at first, uh, I've struggled with design. It was something where I changed my mind so many times because once I started coding it, it just didn't seem the way I kind of imagined it. Now, tools like Figma or Adobe XD are design tools. They'll let you wireframe, prototype, see how the application works and allow you to actually visualize it. Now, when you visualize it, you'll be able to clarify if this is something that you actually want and therefore you'll have a really strong decision whether you like what you've designed or you don't. Is the user experience good or is it not? So it's definitely really worth looking into a design tool and learning how to use one before you jump right into coding because that sometimes may be very faulty. Now, when you do go ahead and make a final decision of uh, what you want to make, you need to pick a text editor or an integrated development environment that you're going to use to actually code your application. Now, there is many, many text editors out there, but the ones I would personally recommend are VS Code or anything that JetBrain, the company, releases, such as WebStorm. Now, those two have a lot of functionality in them. They might be a little bit complicated at first, but they will aid your workflow. And if you learn them from the beginning, I assure you, you're not going to have any problems or you're not going to need any other integrated development environment in the future, simply because of the functionality that these two offer. 
Now, once you establish your code editor and you have everything set up, now it comes to learning HTML and CSS. Now, probably most of you watching have had some experience with HTML and CSS in the past. But for those that don't know, we can call HTML a programming language. It's not, it's basically a structural language. It allows you to structure your web page, put in all the informative content, your titles, your pictures, uh, your text, uh, the information that you wanna transfer. Then we come to the CSS side which gives you the functionality to be able to style that heading, to be able to style that picture, to be able to make your text bigger, smaller, a different color, whatever it is. And that's the very basic of website creation. HTML gives your web page value, CSS makes it pretty. But if you want to go deeper than that, which of course you can, to go from creating a web page to a web application, which will have much, much more functionality, you need to pick a framework that you're going to use, and that's where it gets a little bit more complicated. Every front-end developer needs to be able to know JavaScript. So JavaScript is the language that you need to learn. Most front-end developer frameworks require the knowledge of JavaScript because that's what the framework is based on. JavaScript is what will give your web page all the functionality that it needs. Choosing the right front-end framework can be difficult. You need to go out there and explore. There are three very popular ones to pick from, which are React, Angular, and Vue. Now, if you were to ask me which one I would recommend for you guys to use, it's React. Now, you might ask me, why would I recommend React? Well, first of all, I think it's uh, very well structured. And secondly, it's quite easy to understand. Of course, with every framework, it will take practice. You're not just going to get it straight away. However, it's one of the more clearer ones, in my opinion. Now, let's assume you've established the front-end side of things uh, and you have chosen React. Now, we want to look at the back-end frameworks that you can use to develop your web application. Now, the most popular ones that I would recommend are Node.js and Dino.js. Node.js has been out for ages. Uh, it's uh, very popular. It has access to so many libraries. And I'm sure if you go with Node.js, you're not going to fault it in any way. However, recently the Node.js has come out and it could possibly be the best uh, backend framework of 2021. So here is the choice that you're going to have to make. Either you're going to go with Node.js that has been out there for a very, very long time and you're sure to find so much support online, or you're going to go with Dino.js, which is much more trending and could possibly lead to you having and standing out from the crowd more because not so many people know it and that might be something that uh, hiring managers might be looking for. As a front-end developer, you need to know about databases. You need to know the difference between uh, relational databases and non-relational. When it comes to my personal recommendation of what I would suggest you do, is I would suggest you guys learn uh, non-relational databases at first. The reason for that is non-relational databases are much more flexible. They give you much more flexibility when it comes to storing your data. Uh, let's assume that you have a person uh, and each person likes a car. With relational databases, you'll need to create a table for each person and then you'll need to create a table for each car, and then you'll need to link each person with each car. And that's where it gets a little bit overcomplicated and it could get a little bit overwhelming for any new beginner wanting to learn databases. That's why MongoDB is something that you can really depend on, especially if you're a new developer and you want to you know, learn how to deal with data and play around with data collection and data handling. The other key aspect, which I think is a very important aspect of any web developer, have the ability to integrate APIs into your application. Now, API stands for Application Programming Interface. And this is basically a layer that allows you to connect between any database data, filter, sort it, manipulate it, and output it for your web application to understand and read and display on the web page. You have APIs from YouTube that allow you to fetch analytics for different types of computers, for the weather forecast for the next week, whatever you probably want is out there for you to be able to publicly use in your applications. So learning APIs is the way to go. Now, the final step in this simple web developer roadmap is to be able to host your website somewhere. There are two ways you could do that. You can either use a trusted hosting provider such as Hostinger to host that data for you, to store all your data, or you could use something like GitHub Pages. However, there is some major differences in those two. Any hosting provider like Hostinger 
it will give you the functionality to host your databases, to host your server-side functionality uh, for that data to then be available and for someone to be able to interact with your website, send you data, or you to be able to receive data from that person. However, GitHub Pages, what it offers is only for you to be able to host static pages. By static, I mean pages which only show information, which only get data from an API call, but you cannot collect or interact with a server-side backend. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed this simple web developer roadmap. So here you have a basic outline of what you should follow, what you should know as the fundamentals of becoming a web developer. Of course, you can dive deeper into all these specific concepts, such as for you to be able to do very cool animations on your website or interact with much more complex APIs. All of this is to come, but you need to have this simple kind of roadmap to follow to understand what the fundamentals are for you guys to be able to have that cornerstone uh, that you can expand on later on depending on your preferences. Now it was awesome seeing your beautiful faces. I'm going to see them much more often now because I'm going to be releasing videos on a regular basis. But for now guys, as always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye! I was born in the city, I was raised on its edges My pop work is life when it's complex I found love in its center If I could live here forever, think it'd be for the better I love the weather, even though it's fog 24-7